Hi there, welcome to the Fourth Valley and West Lothian supported study resource for higher history. The main focus of today's lesson and our learning intention for today is to learn about the best approaches for structuring responses in both Paper 1 and Paper 2 of the Higher History course. Today's learning intention and our main focus for the day, we are learning about the different approaches for structuring responses in both Paper 1 and Paper 2 of the Higher History course. Our success criteria for the day. I can understand the mark allocations for each of the question types that I will be answering. This will cover both Paper 1 and Paper 2. Our second success criteria, I can understand the different approaches for answering questions that will allow me to maximise the potential marks that I receive in my paper. And success criteria number three, I can use my time effectively to maximise my potential marks. So just before we get started, some suggestions of what you will need for today's lesson. What you will definitely need is a pen or a pencil, some paper, whether that's a jotter or your notebook, and a timer. And this is especially important if you're going to be completing the questions as part of today's lesson. You can use a watch or you can use the timer on your phone. Some of the things that you may want to bring with you for today's lesson are highlighters and post-it notes. This is particularly useful for organising your notes, for highlighting key pieces of information, or for writing down any questions to yourself that you would like to have answered later. Throughout today's lesson, you will see various symbols on the slides to indicate what you should be doing at that point during the lesson. Here are some of the symbols that will be used and what they mean. The first symbol is asking you to listen to the information that's being shared with you. The second symbol is asking you to speak or to repeat any of the information or tasks that you're being asked to complete. The third symbol is asking you to read the information that's on the slide on your screen. The fourth symbol is asking you to either write or copy. This may also be used for when you're being asked to complete tasks on your own. The fifth symbol is asking you to correct your work. Throughout today's lesson, you will be able to access the SQA marking instructions and that will allow you to mark your own answers as we go through the lesson itself. The final symbol is asking you to pause the video to allow you to complete the task. So before we get started on looking at some of the question types, that you'll be dealing with in the Higher History course, it's really important to make sure that you're aware that you're going to be answering questions from three different sections. There is a British context, a European and world context, and a Scottish context. So before we start looking at the different question types that we see in the Higher History course, it's important to remember that in our assessed pieces of work, you'll be answering questions from three different sections. The British context and the European and world context look at the essay questions. The Scottish context looks at the source questions and a knowledge question. Now this is something that you should already be aware of, but it's also really important to make sure that you understand the structure for the higher history papers. Paper one, focuses on the essays. This covers the British and the European and world contexts. In each, you'll have a range of essay questions that you can choose from. Essays are worth 22 marks each, and that means it's 44 marks across the total of your paper. The essay paper will last one hour and 30 minutes, which means that you should spend approximately 45 minutes on each essay. Paper two is a wee bit different. Paper two looks at source questions and a knowledge question. And these come in terms of the Scottish context. 
The pea pit itself is worth 36 marks and just like the essays, it will last approximately 1 hour and 30 minutes. As part of this paper, you will have to answer a number of different question types. This includes an evaluate the usefulness question, which is worth 8 marks, a how much do sources A and B reveal about the differing interpretations of, sometimes called the two source question, and that's worth 10 marks, a how fully question, which is also worth 10 marks, and an explain the reasons question, which is worth 8 marks. The evaluate question, the two source question, and the how fully question all use historical sources. The explain the reasons question is asking you to use your knowledge to answer the question. So before we start looking at some of the essay structures themselves, I wanted to give you some helpful tips on how to deal with paper one. Where possible, avoid using the first person. So for example, avoid using things like, I think. Use clear, developed examples to support your knowledge where possible. This is really important for the higher course, that you use knowledge that is developed and relevant to the question that's being asked. It's absolutely crucial that you read the question that's been set for you and not the question that you think you want to answer. Take care to look at the wording of the question and if necessary, use a highlighter to highlight key words or phrases in the question to remind yourself of what it is you're actually being asked. Take particular care with your timing and make sure that you're spending the same amount of time on each essay. A good rule of thumb is to spend 45 minutes per essay. That includes writing your essay and if possible, proofreading your work to make sure that you haven't made any significant errors. In order for us to understand exactly how to maximise our marks for our essays, it's really important to understand how the marks themselves are actually allocated. On the screen in front of you, you can see the mark breakdown for each essay. For your introduction, there's three marks available. For your use of knowledge, there's six marks available. For your use of analysis, and this is basic and developed analysis, there's six marks available. For evaluation, there's four marks. And for your conclusion, there's three marks available. So now we're gonna start looking at each section of paper one and potential structures that you can use to maximise your marks achieved throughout your paper. We're starting with the introduction. In order for you to access the full three marks for your introduction, your answer must include the following. Your introduction has to have two relevant points of background information that answers the issue that's in your essay. You must also identify the key factors that you're going to be discussing in your essay. You don't have to talk about them in detail at this point. You can save that for your main paragraphs. What you have to do though is acknowledge the factors and let your marker know that this is something you're going to be talking about. You should also clearly identify a line of argument that includes the factors that you're going to be discussing. A helpful hint for the introduction is to try to complete it in approximately five to six minutes. This will allow you to spend as much time as you can on the factors you're going to be writing about and to make sure that you have a well-developed conclusion that maintains your line of argument and directly answers the question. So at this point, I thought it would be helpful to see for you to see an example of an introduction that would gain the full three marks. This is an introduction that's been written in response to a question in the 2019 SQA paper. The question itself, to what extent did the Nazis stay in power due to the popularity of their social policies between 1933 and 1939? The introduction itself 
1933, Hitler was appointed as Chancellor of Germany and set about dismantling democracy. The Nazis were the largest party in the Reichstag, with 196 seats. However, this was not enough to form a majority. Hitler exploited various opportunities to take supreme power in Germany, establishing himself as Führer. There were many reasons why the Nazis were able to stay in power, including a totalitarian state, fear and terror and the use of propaganda. Although the Nazis' use of social policies was also an important reason why they were able to stay in power, the main reason was fear and state terror, as it coerced people into absolute obedience. As you can see indicated on the screen, in this answer, two relevant pieces of background information or context have been given, and that's indicated by the first arrow. The second arrow shows you how you could structure the factors that you're going to be discussing. As you can see, the candidate has listed the factors, but what that means for the marker is that they can see exactly what's going to be in this essay. The line of argument is the last section and it's indicated by the third arrow. The line of argument acknowledges the isolated factor in the question, which is social policies. However, it then goes on to say the main reason was fear and state terror. And this is the line of argument that's going to be maintained throughout the essay. It's really important that you start your essay on a strong footing. It helps you to remember exactly what you want to be discussing. It sets up your line of argument and it gives you a nice clear structure for the rest of your essay. At this point, you can pause the recording and complete the suggested task that's on the screen in front of you. You can select either the previous essay question or if you don't study Germany as part of your higher history course, you can use the QR code and the SQA link on the screen to access the full range of past paper questions. You should select an essay from either the British or the European and world context that you study in your school. Under timed conditions, draft an introduction to answer the question. You can then use the marking instructions to correct your own work. This is a very useful activity that you could use to work on your timing, but also to remind yourself of the structure for answering an introduction. So the next area where you can achieve marks in an essay is for knowledge. Throughout your essay, there's six marks available for your use of knowledge. The knowledge itself should be clear and detailed, with specific examples being given to support whatever point it is that you're making. In general, you should have at least three factors. However, if you have four, this will allow you to access the full range of evaluation marks. It's a good idea to make sure that you have identified and written about your isolated factor. If you choose to ignore the isolated factor, then that makes it more challenging for you to access the full range of marks throughout your essay. We're now going to look at the next area of the essay where you can achieve marks, and this is for your analysis. Across your essay, there's six marks available for analysis. And in order for you to access the full six marks, you must demonstrate both basic analysis as well as developed analysis. A suggested structure for when you're completing your analysis points, where possible, try to include counter arguments or limitations to factors. Your first piece of basic analysis should be your explanation or analysis of the factor in terms of the question. More developed analysis looks at counter arguments or limitations to factors, and we'll be seeing an example of that just shortly. Depending on which sections that you have been learning about in your school, your teacher will have given you some examples of analysis to think about in terms of your essays.
So we're now going to look at an example of both knowledge and analysis for our essays. This question has been taken from the SQA 2019 paper and the question itself, social fears were the main reason for changing attitudes to immigration in the 1920s. How valid is this view? This essay question comes from the, from the European and World section on the USA. The first part of the paragraph, huge crime rates were beginning to be blamed on immigrants as crime rates in the country were increasing alongside immigrant numbers. This sentence has been given one mark for knowledge. It's clear, specific and provides an example. The second part of the paragraph, this is important as it demonstrated the view that many white Americans possessed that immigrants were largely inherent criminals and much of America's crime would be caused solely by them. This has been given one mark for basic analysis. It demonstrates an explanation of the knowledge point and provides a clear link to the question. The next part of the answer, however, on the other hand, social fears had less of an impact on changing attitudes as charity workers and social workers were responsible for highlighting the real causes of crime, which was down to loneliness, terrible living conditions and poverty. This proved that crime rates would be evident, even in the absence of immigrants. These two sentences combined have been given one mark for developed analysis. As we can see on the screen, this has offered a counter argument to the earlier piece of analysis that had been given. At this point, I wanted to give you just a brief outline of how you achieve four marks for evaluation. In your higher essays, marks for evaluation are allocated as follows. Two marks are given for isolated evaluative comments on different factors. So you can achieve one mark for an evaluative comment on one factor and one mark for an evaluative comment on another factor. Two marks are given for connecting evaluative comments to your line of argument. Overall, this is a challenging skill in your higher history course and your teacher may have already shown you examples of how to do this in the essays that you have been completing in class. The final area where you can access marks for your essays is in the conclusion. In your higher essays, your conclusions will always be worth three marks. In order for you to achieve the full three marks for the conclusion, there are certain things that you must be able to do. In your conclusion, you must make sure that you have directly answered the question that you have been answering. You must make sure that you have acknowledged your essay factors in relation to the question and made a relative judgment on these. What that might mean for your essay is that you're comparing your factors or ranking them in terms of which factors are more important and which factors are less important compared to each other. To access the full three marks, you must also make sure that you have maintained the line of argument that you set out in your introduction. You should also be able to explain how your relative judgments have come about by using knowledge. Each conclusion for each essay may be different and it's likely that your teacher will have shown you the best structure to use for the particular essays that you have been studying in your school. The final area where you can access marks for your essays is in the conclusion. In your higher essays, your conclusions will always be worth three marks. In order for you to achieve the full three marks for the conclusion, there are certain things that you must be able to do. In your conclusion, you must make sure that you have directly answered the question that you have been answering. You must make sure that you have acknowledged your essay factors in relation to the question and made a relative judgment on these. What that might mean for your essay is that you're comparing your factors or ranking them in terms of which factors are more important and which factors are less important compared to each other. To access the full three marks, you must also make sure 
that you have maintained the line of argument that you set out in your introduction. You should also be able to explain how your relative judgments have come about by using knowledge. Each conclusion for each essay may be different and it's likely that your teacher will have shown you the best structure to use for the particular essays that you have been studying in your school. At this point, you could pause the recording and carry out a checkpoint. What this means is that you could stop, have a look back over your notes and make sure that you're clear on the mark allocations for the essays and how to approach the essay questions. You've already looked at a lot of information for the higher history course and you've done really, really well to get to this point. So if you need to take a wee breather for a couple of minutes, review the information that we've looked at in the lesson so far, then you can do that. Feel free to press play when we're ready to begin again. So we're now going to take a look at paper two of the Higher History course, which is looking at the Scottish context. In this paper, there will be a combination of source questions and a knowledge question. The question types that you will see in this section of the course are an evaluate the usefulness question worth eight marks, the two source question worth 10 marks, a how fully question worth 10 marks, and an explain the reasons question worth eight marks. As previously discussed, your paper will be worth 36 marks and it should take about an hour and a half to complete. Just before we get started looking at the different question types and the ways that you can approach these question types, I want to give you some helpful hints to get you started for paper two. One of the most important pieces of advice is to make sure you're taking care with your timings. Over the paper, you should spend about two and a half minutes per mark. And what this means is for your 10 mark question, you should be spending about 25 minutes of it on it. And for your eight mark question, you should be spending about 20 minutes on it. Please make sure that your knowledge is backed up with relevant Scottish examples. As far as possible, avoid making vague statements. And this is particularly important when you look at the era of the Great War context. When you're revising for paper two, try to condense your knowledge into the different issues for your section and aim for learning 10 pieces of knowledge per issue. What this means is that you'll be able to do is answer all of the questions in the Scottish section and you'll have plenty of historical knowledge that you can use in your answer. When you're completing your source questions, it's also advised that you use a highlighter because this will allow you to quickly identify points from the source that help you to answer the question. Finally, make use of mind maps and flashcards to revise your knowledge for the four issues that you will be asked about. This helps to break the information down into easier chunks and it makes the facts a bit easier for you to remember. So the first source question that we're going to have a look at today is the two source question. The question itself is worth 10 marks. It should take you approximately 25 minutes to complete and marks are allocated as follows. There is up to six marks available for interpreting or establishing the viewpoint of each source and we'll explain what that means in just a second. There's also up to six marks available for recalled knowledge. And what this means is that you're able to use the mark allocation to decide how many points you want to extract from the source and from recall. However, there is a suggested structure on the screen in front of you that would allow you to give yourself the best possible chance of achieving 10 out of 10 for this question. As a starting point, you should make sure that you read both of the sources and highlight the points in the sources that you think you would want to refer to. From there, you should carry out the following structure. Step one is to identify the overall viewpoint of source A, and there's one mark available for that. Step two is to identify the overall viewpoint of source B, 
and there's one mark available for that. You may want to consider the sources in terms of whether they have a positive or a negative viewpoint of the historical issue. Step three and four are very similar. Step three is when you should be quoting and explaining your source points from source A, and you would do this three times. There's three marks available for this. Step four is when you're quoting and explaining your source points from source B. You do this three times and there's also three marks available. The final step is to provide recalled knowledge. There's up to six marks available for this in your paper. However, it's suggested that you try to provide four points of recalled knowledge in your answer. On the screen in front of you, you can now see an example of a two source question. This has been taken from the 2019 paper and it's the Migration and Empire section. The question itself, how much do sources A and B reveal about the differing interpretations of the reasons for internal migration in Scotland? At this point, you can pause the recording and you can attempt this question on your own under timed conditions. If you don't study the Migration and Empire topic, on the screen in front of you is a QR code that will give you access to the SQA past papers online. You can go into the Scottish section, find the area of study that you complete in your school, and you can attempt the two, mark source, the two source question from there. There's also marking instructions available. So once you have completed your question under timed conditions, you can mark it and see how you got on. So on the screen in front of you, you can now see an exemplar answer for a two source question. This isn't the full answer that was written, but it just shows you some examples of how you can pick up marks in this particular question type. The first part of the answer, source A is positive, insisting that many Scots wanted to move to urban areas as it was easy and they were encouraged to do so by loved ones. That sentence received one mark for establishing the overall view viewpoint of source A. The next part of the answer was given one mark for correctly interpreting a source point. Interpreting doesn't just mean that you repeat the source back. You have to show some understanding of what that source point actually means. And it's really important that you use your wider knowledge when you're showing interpretation of the source point. Let's have a look at the answer. Source A says, many went to the central belt of Scotland as it was becoming one of the greatest centres of industry and employment could be found in the huge cotton mills, ironworks, coal mines, shipyards, engineering shops, railways, and a host of other businesses. The explanation of this, this shows that many Scots wanted to migrate as they recognised the seemingly unlimited job opportunities offered in urban areas. As you can see from the explanation, it goes further than simply repeating the source back. There's some understanding here of what that quote actually means, and that's what you have to be doing as part of your answers too. The final part of the answer you can see was given one mark for providing relevant recall that's linked to the question. We can see here that there's a judgment that's also been given. However, there are a number of reasons for internal migration unmentioned in sources A and B. The next part is the knowledge or the recalled knowledge. Many Scots migrated after the potato blight reached Scotland. This encouraged them to migrate, which is the link to the question, as many were nearing starvation due to the inability to grow potatoes. So not only here do we have a piece of knowledge, but it has also been explained in terms of the question. The next question type that we're going to look at today is an explained question. In this question, there are eight marks available. This is a knowledge question which means that there isn't a source that you need to then refer back to. When answering an explained question, you must ensure that each of your points contains process, 
And what that means is it has to link back to the question that has been asked. You should also provide explanation, which means that you have to think specifically about how this point answers the question that's been asked. It's also absolutely crucial that you should provide a Scottish example or reference, which will allow you to back up your point. A suggested structure is that you start each sentence with the words of the question, and that gives you a very clear link to the question. From there, you should provide your knowledge point, possibly supported with a clear Scottish example. You should also give an explanation of why this is important and or significant. If you would prefer to give your explanation, followed by your example, that would also be acceptable. So we're now going to look at an example of an explained question. This question has also been taken from the 2019 SQA paper on migration and empire. The question itself explained the reasons why migration and empire had an impact on Scotland to 1939. If you don't complete the migration and empire section, you can access other explained questions through the SQA past papers, which are accessible by using the QR code on the screen. At this point, you can also pause the recording and complete an explained question of your choosing, either the one shown on the screen or one from the SQA past papers. Just a reminder, under timed conditions, this question should take you about 20 minutes. You can also use the SQA marking instructions to correct your work. On the screen in front of you, you can now see an exemplar of how you could approach an explain question. The answer itself, one way that migration and empire had an impact on Scots was because of the development of Jewish industry. The part that's underlined gives a clear link to the question. The part that's in italics, Jewish tailors and tobacco traders produced jobs for many Scots, which benefited the Scots economy, provides explanation. The last part of the first paragraph, for example, Goldberg's clothing shops appeared throughout the country, supplying many jobs, provides a relevant Scottish example and counts as a point of knowledge. Overall, that first part would get one mark for a good explanation about the development of Jewish industry and a Scottish example has been provided. The second part of the answer is very similar. Another reason why migration and empire had an impact on Scotland was because of Italian cafes. The part that's underlined shows you how you can link to the question and you can see that both of these examples start with the words of the question. The part in italics gives explanation. The development of Italian cafes became embedded in Scottish culture, known as cafe culture. This has then been supported with an example of knowledge. One of these influential cafes can be seen in Nardini's and Largs. This is also a Scottish example. One mark has been given for this particular part of the answer, for a good explanation being given about the impact of Italian cafes, as well as a Scottish example. We're now going to take a look at our next source question for today, which is a how fully question. Just a reminder, a how fully question is worth 10 marks, and you can gain the marks for this in a number of different ways. In your answer, there is a maximum of four marks available for interpreting points from the source. What this means is that you have to identify the point from the source and show that you understand what it means by providing an explanation that relates back to the question. A maximum of seven marks is available for recalled knowledge. This means that the knowledge has to be relevant to the question and it must support your judgment. A really important point to remember about your how fully question is that at the very beginning of your answer, you should make a clear judgment on the source. In a how fully question, the source will never tell you the full picture. There will always be some information that's missing or it's been left out. 
and that's what you should tell us in your judgment. If you miss out a judgment in your answer, the maximum marks you could receive for that answer is 2 out of 10. So it's really important that you get your structure correct. On the screen in front of you, you could see a suggested structure for how to deal with a how fully question. The very first thing you should do is make a judgment on the source. You might want to structure it something like this. Source A partly or to an extent and then you would use the words of the question. From there, you should interpret the points from the source. A suggested structure for this, source A says, and you give your quote. From there, you provide explanation. You could start that off by saying, this shows or this is important because. You should then explain the point from the source and link it back to the question. Remember, explanation isn't just about repeating the source back. You should show an understanding of what that source point means by using your knowledge to explain it. At that point, you would provide recalled knowledge. You might want to structure it like this. However, there are many factors about, and then you would use the words of the question, that the source doesn't mention. And at that point, you can then go on and provide your recalled knowledge. Just a reminder, recalled knowledge should be clear, specific and relevant to the question. In terms of how many points you should take from the source, there's a maximum of four points available for source interpretation and a maximum of seven points available for recalled knowledge. Your teacher will have told you the best structure and the best number of source points and recall points that you should be putting into your answer. We're now going to take a look at an example of a how fully question. This example has been taken from the SQA 2019 paper on migration and empire. The question itself, how fully does source C explain the experience of immigrants in Scotland? And it's worth 10 marks. At this point, you can pause the recording and you can complete this source question under timed conditions. As it's a 10 mark question, it should take you about 25 minutes to complete. If you don't study the Migration and Empire section, you can use the QR code on the screen to access the full range of SQA past papers online. You can choose the section that you study in your school and select a how fully question to complete. Once you've finished your answer, you can use the marking instructions available online to correct this. We're now going to have a look at a short example of how you could approach a how fully question. On the screen in front of you, you can see that there has been a source judgment made, source interpretation and recalled knowledge provided. The first point of the answer, source C quite fully explains the experience of immigrants in Scotland, is an example of a source judgment. While you don't pick up a mark specifically for the judgment, it means that you can access the full range of marks available in the rest of the answer. This example indicates that the source isn't telling the whole story, it's only quite fully. And there's also been a link provided to the question. From there, one mark has been given for the point from the source. Source C mentions no Jewish entrepreneurs saw an opportunity to set up business manufacturing a wide range of clothing, including the cloth cap. The explanation of this, this shows that many Jews had a positive experience in Scotland as they benefited from advancing the tailoring industry. The explanation has a really clear link to the question where it says, this shows that many Jews had a positive experience in Scotland. The part that follows that is then the explanation. Those two sentences combined received one mark. The next part of the answer shows a further example of a source judgment. However, there are many factors for immigrant experience in Scotland that's not mentioned in source C. The next part of the answer was given one mark 
for recalled knowledge. Italian immigrants had a negative experience in Scotland as they were often berated by Scots for having their cafes open on a Sunday, which was considered to be the holy day amongst Protestant Scots. Again, we can see a very clear link to the question and the opening part of that sentence, where it says Italian immigrants had a negative experience in Scotland. The part that follows is the explanation and knowledge to support the judgment. We're now going to look at our final question for today, which is an evaluate the usefulness question. This question is worth eight marks in your paper, and you can access these marks in a number of ways that you can see on the screen. Four marks are available for comment relating to author, timing, type or purpose of the source. Two marks are available for comment relating to the content of the source. And three marks are available for comment relating to source omission also called Recalled Knowledge. When you're completing and evaluate the usefulness question, you could approach it like this. The first thing that you could do is to comment on the content of the source. As we know, there's two marks available for that. How you could approach it is to say something like, source A says and give the quote from the source. You would then explain it by showing this is useful or important because I know that, or I know this is accurate, because. It's really important to go a bit further in terms of your explanation, because you have to show your marker that you know that that point from the source is accurate. And it's at that point you would have to bring in your own knowledge to the explanation. And you do this twice. From there, you would then comment on source omission. And there's three marks available for that. You could structure it in the same way that you see on the screen. You could say something like, however, there are many points about, and you would use the words of the question, which are not mentioned in the source. At that point, you would then go on to provide three detailed pieces of recalled knowledge that's relevant to your question. If you manage to complete step one and step two correctly, You've guaranteed yourself five out of eight for your answer already. From there, you would comment on authorship, timing, type or the purpose of the source. On the screen, you can see some suggested strategies or approaches for how to deal with authorship, timing, type or purpose. It's likely that your teacher will already have shown you some suggested comments that you could use when you're commenting on any of these areas. We're now looking at an example of an evaluate the usefulness question. This question has also been taken from the 2019 Migration and Empire paper. The question itself, evaluate the usefulness of source D as evidence of the impact of Scots emigrants on Canada. If you don't complete the Migration and Empire section, you can access other Evaluate the Usefulness questions by using the QR code on the screen. You can use this to access the full range of SQA past papers and marking instructions. At this point, you can pause the recording and either complete the question that's on the screen in front of you, or you can use the QR code to access the SQA papers and select your own Evaluate the Usefulness question from one of the sections that you study in your school. Remember, if you're completing this under timed conditions, that this question should take you about 20 minutes. The marking instructions are also available online and you can correct your work. We're now going to have a look at a couple of points from an exemplar answer. What you can see on the screen is examples of source interpretation, source omission, and comments on the purpose of the source. Let's have a look at the points of source interpretation. Source D says, the atmosphere was distinctly Scottish and had the feeling of a Cayley night back in their homeland. The explanation, this is important, you could also say this is useful, as I know that Scots often introduced aspects of their culture, such as Cayleys, to Canada, which makes the source more useful. One mark's been awarded for interpreting the point from the source and linking this back to the question. 
The second point of the answer? However, there are many points about the Scots impact on Canada that are not mentioned in Source D. The part that follows that is a piece of knowledge. Scots contributed to the development of the economy of Canada as they were crucial in developing the fur trade. One mark was given for that. The final mark on the screen was given for identifying the purpose of the source, which was to inform the public of the effect Scots had on Canadian culture. The explanation provided, this is useful as it presents a limited view on the true impact of the Scots, only commenting on one aspect of Scottish and Canadian culture. We're now at the end of our lesson for today. Our learning intention had been to learn about the different approaches for structuring responses to both the Paper 1 and Paper 2 aspects of the Higher History course. Our success criteria had been to understand the mark allocations for each of the question types that would be answered. We've discussed the mark allocations for each of the essays, how the marks are awarded and also looked at examples of that. We've also looked at the source questions, how the marks are allocated, and again, we've looked at examples. I can understand the best approaches for answering questions that will allow me to maximise the marks that I receive. The information that has been shared with you today has been intended to give you some guidance on the different approaches that you could use when completing your own answers. The final success criteria, I can use my time effectively to maximise my potential marks. At this point, you should now be aware of exactly how long you should be spending on each aspect of your question paper. Your next steps for moving on from this lesson are to continue to practise and prepare for assessment questions by using the SQA Pass papers available at the QR code that you see on the screen. This is absolutely crucial for you because it really helps to build your confidence, improve your timing and helps you to revise the knowledge that you'll need for your assessed pieces of work. Always remember that the marking instructions are available online, so if you're in doubt, you can refer back to these and that can help you to inform the rest of your answer. You should also try to rank the different question types that we've looked at today in order, starting with the question type that you feel the least confident in and work your way up to those that you feel more confident in. You could divide this into your essays, knowledge question and source questions. The idea behind this is to help you identify the question types that you need most practice on. This will help you to prioritise what you need to do for your assessments in school and it also helps you to identify the question types that you should be practising as part of the SQA papers. At this point, I would like to say thank you to everyone for joining me today. I know that there's been lots and lots of information shared, but I know that you're going to do really well in the future and I'm wishing you lots of luck. Thank you again. Bye.